What is it, Elaine? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Isn't there someone else you'd rather give it to? Or am I just the most convenient choice? Not at all. The Rite of Covenant can only be performed if the two parties are of one mind, and one heart. Is that true? The Rings will suffer no lies. It's you, Scarlet. It's always been you. These feelings I bear are not mere friendship, but a love both deep and utterly profound. I finally understand that now. You know, I always thought it was my mission that kept me standing beside you. But I realized something back when we were separated. I treasure you more than I could have ever dreamt. Then stay with me, Scarlet. Until the day we both drift off into eternal slumber. Nothing in this world could make me happier. So it's true. There's really no lying to the rings. I love you, Elaine. And I always will. I'll start by offering a prayer to the Sanctuary.
He who bears the ring of the unicorn, present its grandeur before me. Progeny of the late Pontifex Arant, you have done well in guiding the Savior to this sacred hall. You know of me? I do. Your father, under compulsion of Baltro's magic, destroyed the seal sheltered upon these grounds. A regrettable fate indeed. Excuse me the question, wise sage. Why is it that those of the pontifical lineage are able to break the sanctuary seals? Tis a tale even older than the orthodoxy itself. But that's over 800 years. Indeed. I speak of ancient Zenoira and their sorcerer's quest for might beyond mortal bounds. A pursuit which brought them to Calavia and the holy power of the almighty unicorn. Enraptured by its supreme brilliance, they began to experiment, using the citizens of Albion as their subjects. In time, those experiments birthed a new race entirely. The population you know as angels. That's... not possible. Yet their only distinguishing feature were the wings on their backs. A mark of failure for the sorcerers who conceived them. The experiments continued unceasingly, but only one success emerged. A man capable of divine wonder. The first Pontifex. Yes, and the gift he bore was the means to lay wandering souls to eternal rest. But how does that relate to the seals? The purpose of Everth's sanctuaries is twofold. The first is to soothe the vengeful spirits of old Zenoira. The second is to accumulate an energy most sacred, the power of cleansing. Galerius impelled your father to set loose the souls bound to the center to break its seal as you know it. In so doing, he divested these grounds of one of their vital duties. But the other, the power of cleansing housed within, still remains undefiled by wicked intent. My father must have foreseen the breaking of the seals all those years ago. Which explains why he asked you to one day guide me here. To impart the power of cleansing upon my ring so that we may stop Galerius before it's too late. Your will is mine own, righteous Prince of Cornea. The ring's gotten stronger, Elaine. I can feel it. Ringbearer, the sanctuaries of Fevreth further seek your call. Deliver your presence unto each in turn, that we may aid you when the fated time arrives. Apologies for asking this of you, Elaine. It's merely that I'd like to make an inquiry regarding the nature of these sanctuaries. Please, your presence is more than welcome. We'll ask the Sage together. I'll start by offering a prayer to the sanctuary. He who 
bears the ring of the unicorn. Present its grandeur before me. Beside you stands the Turanos of Elheim. Hmm? The ring of the unicorn would remain ever bound were it not for you. Or for your ancestors, who conveyed the Rite of Covenant through a great many generations. For that, you have my utmost gratitude. Tis a kindness I scarcely deserve, a wise sage. But if I may, I wish to ask a question of you. For what purpose were these sanctuaries constructed? To house errant, wandering souls. Those of the fallen Zenoiran Empire. Yet that raises another question still. How is it that Zenoira met with ruin? Twas an act of hubris immeasurable. In search of the forbidden gift of immortality, their sorcerers made sacrifice of a divine being. <gasps> The great and noble unicorn. Such vile disregard for the natural world. Indeed. And greed only drove them further from their own humanity. Amidst the slaughter, they sought to elicit the creature's purifying energy, and in so doing, break free of the shackles of mortality. Yet the cleansing fires of the unicorn glow impossibly bright, Violent in their rejection of vice and villainy. For the wicked-hearted to harness such a power as their own would be a contradiction of its very purpose. T'was a miscalculation of the most fatal ilk. With the beast's dying embers, the fury of the unicorn struck Zenoira's people. Their skin burned, their flesh was rent from their bodies, and their souls were condemned to wander for the rest of eternity. How horrible! T'was the greatest irony, then, that the right proved a success in the end. From the ashes of tragedy rose but one survivor. A single girl, capable of communion with the divine unicorn her countrymen had so cruelly defiled. Aside the Pontifex of Albion, and the elven Turanos, she set forth to deliver peace to the restless souls of Zenoira's citizens. A venture which saw them construct six sanctuaries spread through every land of Fevreth. Upon its completion, she rallied those loyal to her cause and founded a new nation, Cornea, of which she would become the first queen. And with the spirits of her brethren pacified at last, she relinquished the power she had never once wished to receive. Twas then that it was severed in twain, each half laid into a sacred relic, symbolic of her tale. The ring of the unicorn. And that of the maiden. Then the reason this ring answers to me alone is the royal blood flowing through my veins. Quite so. Your heart is that of the unicorn, fated to commune with a maiden true and fair. A destiny which culminated in the rite of covenant and the subsequent unbinding of the ring's true form. Now, the power of cleansing housed within these grounds will prove a great boon in the battle ahead. You need only accept its grace. Your will is mine own, righteous prince of Cornea. The ring's gotten stronger, Elaine. I can feel it. Ringbearer, the sanctuaries of Fevrith further seek your call. Deliver your presence unto each in turn, that we may aid you when the fated time arrives.
sorry for making you drag us along like this. Please, there's nothing to apologize for. I take it you have a question to ask. We want to see if this sage knows anything about the blue. It's the only reason we even got in here, so... I'll start by offering a prayer to the Sanctuary. He who bears the ring of the Unicorn, present its grandeur before me. You've accomplished much, Rainbearer. Tis no easy feat crossing a nation bound in the harshest of winters. I don't mean to interrupt, wise sage, but I was wondering if you could answer something for us. What exactly is the Bastorius Blue? You refer to the Azure Stone on your person, yes? It is magic made crystal, cultivated by the elves of yore. Long ago, when their kind still called Bastorius home. There were elves here? That era too saw Zenoira's reign encroach upon every region of Fevrith. The elves to the south, secure behind Ergalda's veil, espoused neutrality and insulated themselves in the forests of Elheim. Yet those in Bastorius did not possess such luxury. Instead, they forged a powerful crystal capable of transforming their bodies into those of colossal beasts. Astrals. But they could turn themselves back, right? Such a technique did exist, yes. Though, unfortunately, it has long been lost to the passage of time. <sighs> Should have guessed as much. Still, Zenoira must have had some reason for wanting the stone so bad. Even though they didn't use their mind control to try and get it. I suspect you allude to the right of channeling. As I understand it, Bestral physiology is far too distinct to house a human soul, making the right a futile venture. In its place, they likely sought the crystal for its similar mastery over the hearts of your race. All in the grand hopes of bridling the same strength they failed to overcome so many years prior. Some story this thing's got. Now, we lack the time for further conversation. Allow me to imbue your ring with the power of cleansing. Use it well, and bring an end to Galerius's cruel ambition. Your will is mine own, righteous Prince of Cornea. The ring's gotten stronger, Elaine. I can feel it. Ringbearer, the sanctuaries of Fevereth further seek your call. Deliver your presence unto each in turn, that we may aid you when the fated time arrives. Forgive me for prying, Berengaria, but why have you asked to join us here? Boltro, I want to know more about the man who thinks he can tamper with other people's minds. I have a few other questions for this sage of yours, too. I'll start by offering a prayer to the Sanctuary.
He who bears the ring of the unicorn, present its grandeur before me. Excellent. Hope you're in the explaining mood, Sage. There's a sorcerer working with Galerius. Goes by the name Baltro. What can you tell me about him? The man was a true prodigy. If ever one has deserved the title. His aptitude for magic was, in a word, peerless. A gift he employed with little concern for sense or morals. Twas through that disregard that he birthed arts as magnificent as they were monstrous. The right of channeling chief among them. Is that how the devil still lives? By possessing the body of another? Baltro himself has no need of such trickery. While the lost souls of ancient Zenoira's people have long stood confined within the sacred grounds of the sanctuaries. Baltro has remained in the realm of the living, sustaining his twisted physical form for centuries upon end. The lone survivor of a fallen empire. But if those souls have been locked away, how exactly was he able to summon them? With the crystal of transference, of course. A potent medium capable of circumventing the barred gate to the beyond. Once the desired soul was summoned, he wielded the right of channeling to convey it into a yet living host. Tis a feat, I presume, only possible for a man of Baltro's infernal aptitude. Crystals of transference? Hmm. I can't say I've ever heard of them myself. I bet they're real tough to come by. Otherwise, he'd have brought back the whole damn empire by now. You make a good point. I've got one more question for you, Sage. This armor I'm wearing, it's not the only set. There was another up in Albion recovered from the sanctuary when Zenoira first started knocking. Way I hear, it was the Pontifex who found it, gave it to a guy named Nigel not long after. So, I was wondering, this place have any old gear you're looking to part ways with? Alas, all armaments stored within these walls have long since been evacuated. Yet the power of cleansing remains pure and true. Grasp it tight, and it shall surely bring you succor in the days to come. Your will is mine own, righteous prince of Cornea. The ring's gotten stronger, Elaine. I can feel it. Ring bearer. The sanctuaries of Fefrith further seek your call. Deliver your presence unto each in turn, that we may aid you when the fated time arrives. I'll start by offering a prayer to the Sanctuary. He who bears the Ring of the Unicorn, 
present its grandeur before me. Your efforts are commendable indeed. I shall grant you my might, but Galerius's ambitions may at last be foiled. If you'll allow me a question first. Galerius asserts himself Emperor of the Fallen Zenyran Empire, but I wonder, do his claims ring true? They do. He is a man dangerous beyond all reason or belief. In truth, Zenoira's people were not born on Fevrith soil, but hail from another continent, beyond the Great Seas. Their populace enjoyed countless years of peace and prosperity, ushered in by magical advancements of the highest order. Yet, after a contested succession sparked civil war, the very magic which once enhanced their lives now stole them away instead. And by the day Galerius emerged victorious, Zenoira was not but barren wastes, inhabited chiefly by the corpses of the damned. Faced with such cold conclusion, most would have considered him a king absent a kingdom, yet Galerius would not be denied his reign. Mustering what few pitiful subjects remained in the realm of the living, he set off to seize a new shore as his own, Fevrith. Then the ancient Zenoira we're familiar with was actually an invading army from a far-off continent. The modest fiefdoms which dotted Fevrith could but thrash and flail beneath Galerius's insurmountable might. Only Elheim, shielded by the bows of the divine Erhelda, was spared utter decimation. If that same conqueror now blights our lands as well, can we assume General Valmor was possessed by his soul? I don't believe we can. An energy so ineffably evil likely derives from something else entirely. How do you mean? Were he merely revived through the rite of channeling, slaying the host would banish his soul back to the frigid gates of the beyond. Yet, to judge by the monstrous aura surrounding him, I fear the task far too great for such crude methodology. No matter the truth of it, Galerius must be stopped. And the power of cleansing, housed within these walls, shall hearten that pursuit. Tis yours, should you but accept it. Your will is mine own, righteous Prince of Cornea. The ring's gotten stronger, Elaine. I can feel it. Ring bearer. The sanctuaries of Fevrith further seek your call. Deliver your presence unto each in turn, that we may aid you when the fated time arrives. a prayer to the sanctuary. He who bears the ring of the unicorn, present its grandeur before me. So the ring is restored at last. You have done well. If I may ask a question, 
You said that if we wished to match Galerius' might, we would first need to unbind the ring's power. But I wonder, why did you bid us return here after? That I may bestow upon you the power of cleansing, accumulated within these walls over the passing of centuries. Do you imply the renewed ring is not enough to defeat him? It is not. If you wish to bring such events to bear, you must usher the souls of Zenoira's people to their long-awaited salvation. The Zenoira of old was an ancient kingdom, said to have fallen in a single cursed night. What do its denizens have to do with this? The night you allude to was that of failed ceremony, one in which they relinquish their corporeal forms. For countless years they suffered in discarnate agony, consigned to merely watch as a new world sprung forth from their own. As you may expect, the weaker hearted among them succumbed first to madness, then to an unyielding, rabid lust for evil. Tis only by the power of the sanctuaries that such wicked souls were put to slumber, sealed away in a realm known solely as the Beyond. And Galerius used me and my father to break that seal. Quite so. He has torn open a scene between the land of the living and that of the dead. A scene through which he shall unite their beings, till neither one is distinct from the other. Then we know now what Galerius seeks. To resurrect the souls of ancient Zenoira. Should he succeed, this world will be met with grave disaster. Yet that is why our sanctuaries exist. Make use of our strength, and bring eternal salvation to the souls of the lost. Now. The power of cleansing housed within these sacred grounds will prove a great boon in the battle ahead. Your will is my own, righteous Prince of Cornea. The ring's gotten stronger, Elaine. I can feel it. Ringbearer, your pilgrimage is fulfilled. And so, too, is the Ring of the Unicorn. Deliver your presence unto the decisive conflict, that we may aid you when the fated time arrives.
Want to keep going? <laughs> so hurt! You won't hurt my friend. You're safe with me. We strive to get through! Not finished yet. I'll protect you. Steady on! I'll not let up! I'll do what I can. Together now! Yield! You won't hurt my friends. Grant me your strength. Fun. You okay? <laughs> One more push! No stopping us! I'll do what I can. <laughs> Steady on! <laughs> yeah, easy now. Lay down! You okay? <laughs> we strive together! <laughs> Not bad.
won't hurt my friend. At least try. I'll protect you. Watch and learn. Don't despair. He's so okay. I'll do what I can. I'm unstoppable. Behold my might. Hurt my friends. We can do this. Have my spear. This is it. I'll help. The battle is ours. Keep going. Over here. Not a chance. We strive together. We can do this. Be good. Better heal over here. Victory is assured. I have you. I'll do what I can. Don't despair. Grant me your strength. Not finished yet. You're mine. Is that better? A flawless victory! Ugh. <sighs> 